Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary, and in today's video, I have some awesome DIY outdoor decor with a special focus on yard and garden pieces. Better yet, these are budget-friendly projects since we will be making them from Dollar Tree products with some recycled containers and bottles along the way. So let's jump right in with this first quick and easy project using two of the Dollar Tree metal plant hangers and three of the metal butterflies. Now, I got all three of the butterflies as the metal stakes, but I should have only gotten one stake and two of the hanging butterflies with the welcome sign, like this one here, and you'll see why in a minute. But first, I want to take the two plant hangers and zip tie them together back to back. I put five zip ties along the pole and then did a crisscross of two zip ties at the bottom. My idea for how to attach the butterflies changed from when I was at the store. So now I decided to attach one butterfly to each of the hooks. And so I'm going to need to remove the stake. I'll do that by bending the stake back and forth until it snaps. But I wouldn't have needed to do this had I bought the hanging butterfly and would have had a little bonus welcome sign as well. And then once those were off, I used some zip ties to attach the butterfly to the hook and then did that on the other side. Once both of the side butterflies were in place, I took the third butterfly and placed that in the middle, then zip tied the stake to the pole of the hanger. I also added some electrical tape to reinforce. And that's it, a quick and easy way to make a more substantial decor piece simply by adding multiples into the one piece. Here is another quick and easy garden decor DIY, again using the metal plant hanger, but this time I'll be adding two of these two tier pinwheels. The first thing I did was to take a small piece of electric tape and wrap the end of the hook to widen it a bit. Next, I popped the top of one of the pinwheels from the stick and then inserted that on the hook. Then I took the second pinwheel and popped off the pointed end at the bottom and then attached it to the plant hanger, again using zip ties and electrical tape. When attaching, I made sure to place so that both pinwheels could operate freely. From here, I decided to paint with some of this hammered copper spray paint. Unfortunately, Mother Nature was not cooperating. And then finally, I was able to get it sprayed. And it was worth the effort. I love how this came out. The hammered metallic finish gives these dollar store pinwheels the illusion of being real metal for a fraction of the cost. And to add a little extra pizzazz, I'm going to paint the middle with this metallic teal paint. And then, oh how beautifully the copper and teal come together to make a lovely metallic look spinning accent to my herb garden that is not only pretty, but will also keep bunnies and other critters from feasting on my herbs. Another fun and functional decor piece for the yard and garden are these stunning rain chains. They are gorgeous, but can be pricey. However, in this DIY version, I'll be using recycled plastic water bottles and dollar store shower curtain rings to make. And the first thing I did was to spray the tops of the bottles with that same hammered copper spray paint that I used in the previous DIY. I will only be using the bottle tops for this project, but I'm keeping them intact here so it's easier to paint. Then once the paint was dry, I cut the tops off. You can use a utility knife, then trim with scissors, or just flatten the bottle and cut with scissors, then trim. Next, I took the shower curtain rings that I had also painted with the same hammered copper spray paint and linked those together. However, I just want to point out that I use these rings from Family Dollar instead of the ones I usually get at Dollar Tree. They look exactly the same, and since they are Family Dollar and Dollar Tree and they're owned by the same company, I figured they were. Big mistake! The Family Dollar ones have a totally different clasp that you have to push through instead of slide and snap, like the Dollar Tree ones, which are much better and easier to use. But since I had already purchased these, I just plowed through, linking four of these together and leaving the top ring open. Then I took my first set of four rings and attached a zip tie to the bottom ring, but did not fasten it and instead just left like a kind of large loop. I then placed the ring into one of the cut bottle tops and fed the zip tie through the hole in the bottle. On the other end, I took another link of the four curtain rings and slid the unsnapped top ring through the zip tie. Then theoretically, I would have easily snapped this ring together. But since I'm using those awful Family Dollar ones, the snapping here requires special tools, multiple people, logistical analysis, and precision engineering that I'll have to do off camera. So in the meantime, we'll just pretend that it snapped together easily, and at this stage, I'll just tighten the zip tie and repeat the process. Here it is again with a black zip tie, which is probably easier to see. I attached the zip tie to the bottom ring, leaving a loop. 
Next, I placed the ring with the zip tie attached into the wide end of the cutoff bottle top and fed the zip tie through the hole. From there, I took another four link piece, slid the open end through the loop, again pretended to fasten, then tightened the zip tie. And you can continue this pattern until you reach your desired length. Next, I took it back outside to spray the zip ties and touch up any areas I may have missed in the first paint. And I think this is really pretty as is, but I decided to go ahead and give it a little further upgrade by adding this trim to cover the top of the bottle as well as the shower ring clasp. And since it's going to be out in the elements, I'm going to go ahead and add a little E6000 glue to further secure. And oh my goodness, I just love this. What a beautiful accent piece. The hammered copper gives a great metal look and the blue accents add a little shimmer, especially as it catches the sun's rays. In addition, when it rains, the chain can help direct water into the garden, or it could also be used to collect water if you choose. Here in Central Texas, we love our metal yard art, especially the brightly colored whimsical offerings. But they too can be rather pricey. So here is a Dollar Tree DIY version using a different variety of those $1.25 pinwheels and some of those Dollar Tree foil cookie sheets. I love to craft with these, but they can be hard on the hands since as you cut them, there are sharp edges. So it is advisable to use gloves. To start, I'm going to snip at the corners to flatten out the pan a little. Next, I'm going to use scissors to cut off all the sides, leaving the bumpy part on the bottom as well as the smooth part around the sides. From here, I want to cut both length and width down the middle so that I end up with four five by seven and a half inch pieces. And then what I want to do is wrap each pedal of the pinwheel with a piece of the pan. I'll start by placing a piece over a pedal and then sliding the ends of the tin under the pedals to each side. I'll then flip the pinwheel over and work from the back. I'll line up the bottom and then fold the tin over at the top of the pedal and work down the side, folding the corner in to align with the taper of the pedal. Then I'll fold in the other side, again starting at the widest part at the top of the pedal and then folding in the bottom corner to align with the taper of the pedal. Next, I'll fold back that excess foil and cut it away. To work on the top of the pedal, I'll flip the pinwheel to the front again, and then at the top of the pedal, there should be about an eighth to a quarter of inch of excess foil. And I'm going to just press that down and around so that I can see the shape of the pedal underneath. From here, I'm going to trim off the corners to make a more rounded shape, and then fold over and seal all the way around. Then I'll repeat that process for the other pedals. And here it is with all the foil attached and you can see how the pinwheel still works great and the foil does not impede it at all. Since this piece will also be outside in the elements, I'm going to take a little E6000 along with a little hot glue to seal the back seams. Hot glue alone will come apart pretty quickly, but will hold the metal in place long enough for the E6000 to set up. From here, I'm going to paint with this marigold yellow spray paint in a gloss finish. And I do like these flowers as is, although I thought it would be fun to give it a little more detailing. So I took some of this gloss enamel orange paint and also a little bit of brown craft paint. To start, I'll take a rounded paintbrush and load it up with the orange paint and then dip the tip into the brown paint. I'll start by blotting the brown paint at the top of the petal and then pulling that through to the end of the petal mixing in now the orange paint. So kind of just streaking the two together to create that multi-dimensional petal look. I'll go between the two colors, mixing and matching and creating streaks and shadows with the two shades. Then I'll go back with the brown paint, dip my brush in there and then just accent the edges of each petal. Then I'll repeat the process for each of the petals. And that's just a great way to add a little depth and dimension to the flower. And then for the middle part, I wanna use the cap of a water bottle. And I'm gonna just paint that with some of the brown craft paint. I'll need a couple of coats. And then once that was dry, I took some yellow craft paint and the back of the paintbrush and just dotted that onto the bottle cap. Then glued it to the center using some E6000. And then how cute, a cheery addition to any yard or garden. And then don't forget, it also spins to keep away any unwanted visitors. Another way to deter unwanted guests is with a windsock. 
And I made a DIY version using this disinfecting wipes container. I removed the lid and then just used a utility knife to cut off the bottom and then I'll remove the label. Next, I took an old pair of leggings and then just cut off the one leg right there at the top. Next, I'm gonna take the disinfecting wipe container and insert it through the ankle end of the leggin. I'm going to pull the leggin up over the top of the container and fold it over into the inside. These spandex leggings are the perfect fit for this project since the material clings to and fits snugly around the container while the remaining part of the leg can be cut easily into one inch strips without fraying. Once cut, the material curls around creating tidy looking tails for my windsock. To drill the holes, I'm going to pull the legging back a little bit to reveal the plastic. I probably should have done this first to drill the holes even before the bottom was cut off so the plastic would have been more stable. Once I had made four holes, I pulled the material back over the top of the container and then use a scissors to make the holes in the material. To make the hanger, I used some jute twine, and in order to thread the hole and make it easier, I put some tape there around the edge and then poked it through the hole. Next, I took the four strands and tied one center knot about eight inches above the top of the container. Now, that's a cute windsock, but to make it a mosquito repellent windsock, I heavily sprayed it down with some of my essential oil mosquito repellent spray. Next, I just had to hang it on the deck and allow the wind to swirl it all around and release all of those awesome mosquito repelling scents. I will then reapply the spray as needed. Well, I hope you have enjoyed these outdoor decor DIYs for yard and garden. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.